I had this really powerful thought while drinking the plant medicine that I have put myself in situations to be consistently mistreated by men. I think I do release some of that, like um, when I'm working out, like for sure. Right? Not that yeah. there are toxins, but we do release a lot. Like it is energy, like everything yeah. is energy, right? And so right, like, right. Working out helps us release some of the energy that just doesn't belong in our body. You know, we're mostly made up of water. So if this is happening to frozen water and still water, same thing is going to happen to you. How you talk to yourself, how you talk in general matters. Yeah, I'm getting emotional. I was not seeing you crying. Hey, 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 Conscious Crew. We are back for another episode of the Conscious Creative Corner. I am your host, Sia, the Transparent Therapist. And of course, on the podcast today, we are unpacking trauma to heal our relationships. I have a very special guest today. I'm super excited for her to be here because she is a longtime friend. Jania, what's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, everybody. I'm so happy that you're here. So I haven't seen you since graduation. Well, since I graduated. So that mm-hmm. was, I graduated in 20. 20- 12? So I haven't seen you since 2012. Oh my God, 12 years. And you look the exact same, which is nuts. <laughs> so do, no, so do you. So do, do you. Do I? Three kids later? <laughs> three, oh my God, three kids. I didn't even know it was three. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, I, was, I had like a, a factory going in my womb. I won't. <laughs> Oh my God, goals. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I am appreciative of you being here because I discovered that though I talk about trauma a lot on my podcast, I don't really talk about the traumatic experiences I've been through. And for mm-hmm. some, you're going to hear and you're going to be like, this isn't trauma, but trust me, guys, this was traumatic for me. Um, mm-hmm. So before we get started, you know, just kind of tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and yeah, anything else that's kind of special. Sure. So I'm Janiel. I'm from New York. Um, I live in Harlem right now, but I'm originally from Long Island. And I'm a personal trainer out here in the city. And I also teach group fitness classes. I actually started my own group fitness class, which is called The Endlet, which is like a high energy, easy to follow dance cardio class. And I pair it with mindfulness as well. So after the exercise, we usually listen to a meditation, you know, I'll say something that's on my heart about just being more mindful in life. Um, and it also was a, it's also been an outdoor fitness class, like that strength and kind of more hip based because I'm just all about being our best selves. And I know that out exercising outside in the elements and nature is an amazing part of exercise. So that's why I started the class being like that. But then dance is also really important to me. I grew up dancing. So I always thought like, oh, doing exercise on the beat of the music, whether it's like a hit exercise or if it's dance cardio, you know, that always gets people to want to move their bodies more. You know, the music is motivating. So I was like, I I love dancing. That's a great way to get people to work out. So I'm going to do that too. Um, So yeah, that's about me. I love to play soccer. I do that recreationally. And um, I'm also into like plant-based nutrition and holistic health. So, and I wasn't always that way, you know, I was always like into movement and like appreciated physical activity, but I didn't always care about nutrition um, or know about the importance of like mindset, mindfulness. So those things have evolved in my life, like since being a trainer and it's been 11 years now. So yeah, that's about me. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, ever since I knew you, you've always been about fitness, right? Um, if I remember correctly, you used to dance on the um, dance team at, in U- at UConn, right? Yes, I did. I and loved you, it. Um, Not a cheerleader. What was it called, though? So, like, you like, weren't... A- it was, yeah, it was the UConn dance team, and we had our own competitions that we would attend, but then we also supported the football and basketball team, men and women's basketball team, so we would be at all the home games for them and then travel with the basketball team as well. So we would be out on the court doing our thing as well as the cheerleaders and the mascot. We were considered all one program, UConn Spirit Pride and Tradition. So, um, yeah, we all had the same coach, 
as the mascots and cheerleaders. So some people would mistake us for cheerleaders because we also had the pom-poms in our hands, but we were the dance team and we dance at the timeouts. Cheerleaders would cheer at the timeouts. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely was one of those people. Sometimes we, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, yeah, she cheers. Wait, no, she doesn't. She dances. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we would say cheers, too, so it was okay. Yeah. 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 I loved it. Oh, I wish I could do that again. I really oh, loved it. You were you. so inspiring. I, I used to love to dance, but I didn't. I, not to that level. Um, I think we connected on that, though, too, because I used to do the, um, the Af- what was it called? So they had like the African dance thing and I can't remember what it used to be called, but I used to love dance and we met through HDFS, right? So HDFS ah. was Human Development and Family Studies. Um, I wanted to be an HDFS major, but then yeah. I didn't actually. So do you know, I don't even know if I shared this with you. So I actually didn't graduate with an HDFS major as an HDFS I didn't know that. What yeah, did you graduate? English? No. <laughs> so yes, but no. So I um there was this thing called individualized studies or something like that. And you can go and create your own major. And so I was uh-huh. just like, yeah, I like HGFS, but I also love communication sciences, like the marketing piece. And then I also really loved English, right? And so I remember I had to present in front of a board and explain to them why I thought my major needed to be created. And I created like a major called family and media. And so I gra- mm-hmm. I graduated with that. It was a lengthy process because at one point I thought I wasn't going to graduate because they wouldn't approve my program. And like I had uh-huh. one professor who was like, no, I believe in you. Keep doing it. And so I I graduated as an individualized uh-huh. major. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Thank God you had that professor finding for you. Yeah. But I'm still an HDFS sister, so I'm here. You, you absolutely are. You absolutely are. <laughs> That's so cool. Family and media. I love how you had the foresight to know that media was going to be a big thing. Yeah, because I when I was in school, like I loved writing, like I I loved blogging. And so I also maybe it was God who was just like, "Hey, one day your face is going to be on the internet, and we just got to figure out how," right? Yeah. And it helped when I transitioned into doing like telehealth and and in-person therapy, right? So that transition was not hard for me at all, where it was hard mm-hmm. for some therapists. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're here. Oh yes, I'm you're here. here. All right. So guys, she's here because I've gone through some trauma. And when I was in undergrad, so I was maybe around like 19, 20-ish, I was in this long-term or long distance sort of kind of relationship with my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> like he was actually my neighbor. Um, <laughs> and we went to high, we went to high school together. I went to college. Um, and I remember we met our freshman year, right, Janelle, I believe? Yeah, my yeah. freshman year. Well, your freshman year. So it was my sophomore year. Yeah. Um, so we met maybe three years into my relationship. And one day I remember going to... There was um this what what did they call it like where we eat it's not a cafeteria what is it? dining hall. Union. a dining, dining hall the dining hall right and I remember you seeing me and I was super sad like I was super sad and you just came mm-hmm. up to me and you was like is everything okay and yeah. you were the first person I ever spoke to that day about what had happened because the night prior um I found out that my boyfriend was cheating on me my ex boyfriend was cheating on me. And this was a man that we, again, we were next door neighbors. So we had like a really good relationship, right? You know, I'd always be at his house. Um, He would be at mine, same thing. And Mm -hmm. we talked about like living the rest of our lives together, right? And at 19, 20, I'm thinking like, this is it, (laughs) you know? And then I find out that he cheats on me. And I think my whole world comes crashing down. And the reason why it became traumatic for me is because when I first got together with him, Janelle, people were just like, oh, Felicia, don't break his heart. He's such a good guy. And I'm like, why, w- why would I break his heart? Right. And I think they got the impression based on like my dating history in high school, right, where I just wouldn't keep I wouldn't stay in a relationship because I was just like, I'm not going to tolerate foolishness. Right. Uh-huh. So I think it really tore me down because people saw me as the bad guy. Right. Being uh-huh. in a relationship, not really knowing like, no, he was the bad guy. You know, and mm-hmm. so that day when you saw me, I don't know, and I'm very private. I was just like, I feel like I can trust her. Let me just tell her what's going on. And so I talked yeah. about it. And what you said to me was just like, I don't know if you remember this, but you, you were like, do you want to pray about it? 
And no one has ever said that to me ever in my life about problems. They'll just listen and be like, oh, it's going to be okay. And you sat and you prayed with me. Like, oh my God, I'm getting emotional. I feel like I was not planning on crying. It's okay. It's okay. Tears are good. It's okay. But you sat with me and I know you had something else to do that day. (laughs) (laughs) But you sat and you prayed and I was just like, oh my God. Right. So I didn't even, I didn't have anyone to speak to. I didn't talk to my mom about it. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. But then I remember just through that prayer, it helped. And I was just like, wait, I'm going to have to suffer in silence. I mean, later on that day, I had other friends. (laughs) Shout out to you, Tay, because I know you're watching this. (laughs) (laughs) Taylor, um, do you you know who Taylor is? I don't think so. Okay. So Taylor, she, she, she went to UConn too. She came, she came to my room with a couple of other friends. Other friends, you know Naomi? No. No, oh, she's from New York too. But she, Naomi, they all came and they were like, hey, do we need caveat? The second year into my um, undergrad, he went to Eastern, which was maybe 20 minutes down the road, which was what uh-huh. hurt even more. <laughs> and they were uh-huh. like, hey, do you want to go drive to his school? And do you want to go key his car <laughs> and do all of these things? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, even though it felt great for that support, I feel like what really helped was just the prayer. And so I wanted mm-hmm. to bring you on and say, like, you know, how do you go through um, friendships or how do you help friends when you know they're going through a rough time? Like, what was it like for you kind of seeing me at that broken down stage? And y'all, I'm I'm not going to apologize for crying. Just maybe no. my eyelash might look a little wonky after this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you still look beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> so how do I, how do I show up for friends? Mm-hmm. And what was it like for you, kind of helping me go through that? Um, I think it's just important to be there and be present for people, you know, when they're going through things. Um, and I just, I just did that, you know. I went to um, a religious based school, like throughout my life. Like I went to Catholic school until eighth grade. And then I went to a Lutheran school for high school. So like prayer was very much a daily part of my life. Um, and just, I was, it was poured into me the power of talking to God. And like, I had friends that had prayed for me, you know, offered that kind of support when I was going through something tough. Um, I feel like the first friend that I feel like really did that for me was one of my really good friends, Bethany, you know, something must have been, I can't even remember specifically what happened, but I feel like she said like, can we pray together? Or can I pray for you about this? And like, we just like did it together. So I feel like that being done for me Mm. is what inspired me to share that with you. You know, each one, teach one, pay it forward, you know, and prayer is powerful, you know, and if you don't want to call it prayer, if you want to, call it you know speaking things to ex- in it, into existence but the words we say are super powerful you know that's why affirmations also work because words have power mm-hmm. you know so they do. um they do yeah they do telling someone about that um i don't know if you're familiar with the experiment there's actually multiple experiments when it comes to words and um one of them is like where uh there's ice and it's frozen there's two things of ice and they freeze it and then one of them they write like really positive words on the other one they write negative words on and the one with negative words um comes out and it has like a lot of broken patterns and it looks horrible right but the one that they wrote positivity over um really the patterns are beautiful and they look like very pleasing to the eye and the same thing with plants they did the same thing with plants and like one that um got spoken to with like words of affirmation and love grew beautifully and the one that just got no attention at all or no like positive affirm um, affirmations it kind of died and withered right and so words are 100 percent powerful and so I, I can't even tell you to this day what you said when you prayed for me I was just like so overcome <laughs> with emotion and um now I think about it I don't think I've ever even said this all out which tells me that I need to go back and do some processing um uh-huh. I had like such an emotional re- um, reaction to it but For you, do you remember any parts of that conversation whatsoever? I don't at the moment, but I also want to say something about what you talked about with the frozen water. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with something. I think there's a book by a Japanese guy. Mm -hmm. um, 
and he did an experiment where he was talking to the water and like there was differences and like you know same kind of thing positive and negative talking to the water and i just want to say as human beings we are 90 percent water yes we you know? are so that vibration that energy same thing is happening inside of us you know we're mostly made up of water so if this is happening to frozen water and still water same thing is going to happen to you how you talk to yourself how you talk in general matters mm-hmm mm-hmm and um I, I i add that too like when i was as ever i tell my clients this whenever they have like self-deprecating speech or like things that are not really um uplifting their spirits i say like you need to be mindful of how you speak to yourself because those words do matter right i don't know who came up with sticks and stones won't break my bones <laughs> will break <laughs> my bones but words will never harm me that is such baloney right? it is it because is words hurt you know words hurt actions hurt um so i do appreciate you for being there with me which is why i was just like oh i have to have her on because she made such an impact and i was telling you earlier right um whenever i think about joy I literally pictured this woman like I don't think I've ever and I'm sure you have your bad days but like I don't think I've ever seen you sad Janiel like yeah yeah like I've been emotional like an emotional wreck in front of you and I've Mm -hmm. never seen you sad and of course I know you get sad right yeah how is it that you find joy all the time um how do I find joy all the time um I think I try to be grateful, Mm -hmm. you know, practice gratitude. Um, And I don't think I always find joy. You know, I did, I went through this, um, I don't know what you'd call it, maybe like a program or something like that during COVID, you know, and someone was talking about energy and just like paying attention to my own energy and stuff like that. And like, she talked about like this spectrum, like maybe on one end is like the worst feeling in the world, like despair, or I don't know what it actually would be, but let's say it's despair. And then on the other end of um, the spectrum is like joy, or just think about like the highest, happiest vibration you could feel. And you know, different days, you're at different places on the spectrum and like, it's not really realistic to go, say you're feeling despair to go all the way to joy. Right. But maybe like one step ahead on the spectrum uh, from despair is, discontent you know Mm -hmm. so i try to like pay attention to how i'm feeling and maybe just try to get one rung above like what i'm feeling in that moment especially because you know my work is very in front of people and my energy matters and how i show up into a space matters so i'm not if something no matter what happens in my day at any moment moment in time how i show up to my clients is really important it's going to affect their experience. And I, I know I do a good, pretty good job of like, no matter what's happening in my life, like I show up in a decent place for them. You know, I mean, no one's ever told me that they didn't like my energy for that day. Maybe, maybe that has happened, but no one has told me that. And I know there's been times when I didn't feel the best and I still had to do my job. Um, you know, is it going to look like days when I'm genuinely happy and stuff like that? Probably not, but at least it's at a level where I can, have a positive impact on the person I'm in front of for that hour, Mm -hmm. you know? So, and I allow myself to feel my feelings, you know, you know, if I need to cry and stuff like that, I do that, you know, at home or wherever. Um, I learned that tears are like healings, but like, you know, if you're crying, like not necessarily to wipe them away, like something physical happens healing wise, like when your tears hit your cheek, um, well, I've never heard of that. Can you explain? Like, can you expound more? Explain on that? more. I don't yeah. know enough to share that much more. But okay, okay. Someone, okay. someone that is like, I forgot what her job is, but she, I, I think she must be a grief counselor. I think that's what she is. Okay. And so she said something like, "When the tears, I'm sure if we Google it, something would come up. But like, when the tears hit your cheek, there's some type of healing mm-hmm. that happens internally to let you know that you're okay." You know, maybe maybe a protective um, factor. Like I'm just thinking on trauma through a trauma lens. And so I tell people all the time, like your tears. I'm so conditioned to saying like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> so yeah. be sorry. And so like when people when clients and patients are crying, crying, they're like, I'm sorry. I'm like, don't apologize. It's energy. Like it's a, it's a yeah. there for a reason. Right. And so maybe 
the connection is, you know, the tears are just saying like, everything's okay. Or like, you know, you're safe still because you have the ability to emote, like give emotion. Right. Yeah. Um, just, I don't know. I'm going to have to do more research, but that's so interesting to know that, you know, that's the way in which it was interpreted. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so I know that, you know, these like really cool facts. And before the show, we were kind of talking about like your recent trip to Costa Rica. Yeah. To share a little bit about that and like what you've learned and things when it comes to the healing space, especially healing that lives in our body, which trauma does. So. Yeah. So, yeah, I went to Costa Rica at the beginning of May for a plant medicine ceremony. And if anyone's familiar, the specific plant that um, I used it was Yahe, Y-A-G-E, um, very similar to ayahuasca. It's a psychedelic and it's has been used for thousands of years in a lot of South American cultures. Um, so this is a plant medicine that's used for healing purposes. Mm -hmm. So I'm, like I said, I'm very into the holistic wellness space. So I know physical exercise is important. I know the foods and what we consume from a nutrition standpoint are important. And that's why I choose to live a plant-based lifestyle. So I'm I don't consume any animal products. Um, I try to stick to like naturally occurring foods, staying away from processed foods and things like that. Um, so I know the healing power of plants. And so when a friend of mine shared with me about plant medicine and like what that entails, I was very open to trying it, you know? Um, so the ceremony is performed with a shaman, you know, you drink this plant medicine and um, it's supposed to help you heal from certain things. So like, yes, I went into the ceremony with a particular intention and I really do feel it's pretty personal, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, mm -hmm. um, but I do feel healed from that, that one really big one. And um, outside of that, I will share something that I feel slightly healed from, but had a little relapse last night. <laughs> um, <laughs> So um, the idea, I had this really powerful thought while drinking the plant medicine that I have put myself in situations to be consistently mistreated by men. Mm -hmm. And that has been like situationship wise, relationship wise. And it's not that I'm being abused by people in relationship. It's just like, I have certain expectations and like they're just not being met but I still stay in the relationship because I think it's going to get better or like something is a situation ship and I think it's going to turn into something more and I say like until last night because you know last night I'm not a, I'm single and I thought about oh like I kind of want to call my ex oh I kind of want to call this person that was a previous situation ship I didn't I'm so happy I didn't last night was a full moon don't know if it had anything to do with that but I was and I, I feel like I don't have those types of feelings often, but it's just like last night. I, and I think it's because this is why what you consume is very important. Like the food you consume is important. But I started watching Sex in the City. I've never watched that show in my life. I just started watching it. And I think like seeing like a lot of the relationship stuff, like these women are in relationship every new one, every episode. And maybe on a subconscious level, like, I don't know, it planted something in my mind to like think more about relationship. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad I didn't make any calls last night. But yeah, I feel like having that awareness from the plant medicine ceremony about my responsibility in these different relationships was very important because I'm just like, I feel like a very immediate reaction was like, oh, this person, like, you know, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Oh, they suck too. Oh, blah, blah, blah. But like, what is my, I play an important role here. I'm choosing to be with this person, even though they told me they don't want a relationship. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm choosing to stay in this relationship even though I'm seeing this person really isn't capable of giving me what I, what I need right now and what I want right now. And yes, there's some great things, but the, I'm also not seeing some other things that I know are necessary for me when I'm with somebody. So yeah, seeing my responsibility and the role I play was very important. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing that. Right. Cause even yeah. personal, right. And just uh -huh. being able to take accountability, it means a lot, right. Saying uh -huh. like, Hey, this is the role I'm playing. Um, uh -huh. do you care if I ask quite boundary? I preach boundaries every single 
like anyone that comes on. Like, so if you feel like yeah. you answer that right now, just be like, oh, I'd rather not answer, right? But do yeah. you feel like maybe there's a part of you that is, you, everyone longs for connection, right? But is there a part of you that feels like, well, maybe it's easy to call my ex or think about my ex or text my ex because it's a point of familiarization. Like you're very familiar with that connection. Yeah, definitely. And so that familiar connection doesn't pose a risk. It's a risk, right? Because there's an ex for a re- there an ex for a reason. But it might you might be seeing it or perceiving it as a smaller risk than meeting someone new, right? Because you already know subconsciously the predictable patterns that might happen if you do. And again, I say subconscious because you're not gonna say like, "Hey, I know I'm always gonna get into an argument with this person," or "I always know this person is gonna mistreat me." That's like in the back of your mind. What's in the front of your mind is, hey, I already know this person. I don't have to go through like the stages of getting to know them, right? Um, which is a smaller risk than meeting someone completely new, not knowing what their pattern, the pattern that you two are going to establish might be, right? Ah. Yeah, definitely. And then I also feel like in that specific moment of desiring human connection, it's way easier to just call someone I know, like versus like. I don't, I'm not going to be axed out on a date in that moment. You know, I'm not really scared to meet new people. I'm very like interested in meeting new people and things like that. It's just, I just haven't had anyone to like go on a date with or like, you know, anything like that, that I actually want to go out on a date with. And so like in that moment of like desiring human connection, like the quickest and easiest thing is to, I guess, call that person that you're familiar with. I guess I could have gone out, but I didn't want to go out. I didn't feel like going out. I wanted to be home. And it, I guess it's just like that, yeah, it's that comfort, that familiarity. And like that, I don't know, probably some like neurochemical, maybe it's dopamine, like would get the, dis- like um, dopamine would provide like some type of satisfaction feeling, you know, even if it's not, gonna go anywhere just talking to them Mm -hmm. would provide something but maybe at the expense of um blocking future blessings and like you're opening a kind of wound and honestly the real reason i feel very fine to be friends with my ex but i feel like he needs some Mm -hmm. time like not from like an angry standpoint but just like you know i know he needs time to like um, get over me and like our relationship not working out. So I feel like that was, I didn't want to like interrupt cause we haven't really been talking yeah. for a couple of weeks. Um, so I didn't want to like disrupt his healing process. Mm. Do you mind me asking, did, was it a mutual breakup? Was it mutual? Not really. I think he wanted to stay in it. He did want to stay in it. So it wasn't mutual, but he understands why like, I felt the need to end things. Yeah. You know, yeah. to be transparent, um, it was finance. It was finances that got in the way. That's important. Right. It is important. Especially if people are in their transitional period of gaining more finances or switching jobs, looking for new jobs. And we know that mm-hmm. we like to live a certain lifestyle. And some of our lifestyles is, hey, I want to go travel. And if you can't come to me, <laughs> come with me to Costa Rica, then mm-hmm. hey, we can't do this, right? Or, mm-hmm. <clears throat> pardon me, or it's just like, hey, you have big dreams, and that person hasn't quite caught up to the dreams in which you you have, right? And so it, mm-hmm. it makes a lot of sense too. And so, I mean, that's very commendable where you're like, hey, I'm not going to interrupt him. We're friends, so we are friends, right? I was under the depression, mm-hmm. you weren't friends, so your friends mm-hmm. are not going to interrupt him because he still had a longing for you or has. Right. Whereas you're like, hey, this isn't going to work until maybe you get yourself into a, a a different place. So the the plant, Iowa, that is not what you say. I- ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Yeah. <laughs> so the plant, ayahuasca, that helps with healing internal, like, stress, it seems, or... A lot of things. Like, there was someone there that was um, battling addiction, mm. alcoholism. You know, some people, a lot of people use it to like um, stop their or heal their addictive behaviors. Um, I feel like trauma, any sort of trauma, you know, some people maybe lost parents, um, healing from anything, you know, it can help with that. 
it, does, it forces it, you to be introspective you know and can give like clarity towards your future like it's it's mother nature so um i feel like whatever kind of intention you set it provides what you need regarding that that's interesting yeah so and everybody I, responds to it differently you know like so so everyone's not going to be introspective i think so and like i probably have more to learn about this medicine but i think I, it does encourage everyone to be introspective. Some people have visions and um, hallucinations. I didn't have any of that. Okay. okay. Yeah. So is this something that you would bring back to your clients when you're with your, um, you consider no. yourself a fitness coach or a fit, you use a trainer? Like, yeah. I consider myself a personal trainer and group fitness instructor. So you have to have a shaman lead you in this. Okay. So the shaman that, they say that you sit with the medicine. The shaman that I sat with is from Costa Rica. I mean, sorry, it's from Colombia. Um, he actually has his own healing center there. I would love to visit his healing center one day. Where I stayed in Costa Rica was amazing as well. Mm -hmm. um, it was jungle, beautiful. But I would love to see um, him in his space, how he does it. Um, so no, I wouldn't necessarily share this with my clients. I feel like, you know, some of them I talked to about it, that this was something I, that I did. Um, and I didn't tell everybody because not everyone's like super open-minded, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't feel the need to share with everybody, but some people that I felt like, felt like right to share it with them, I did. Mm -hmm. And okay. um, so I wouldn't be one to distribute this to them, but they all know that I'm plant-based. So, yeah. Like so, if I, if it probably would, maybe wouldn't like be so foreign to them to think that this is something that I, that I participated in. Some of them have had friends that have also participated in it. Oh yeah. One of my clients, she, t she said, I wouldn't do it. Like everyone I know that does it gets a divorce. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to assume so, that she's, she's married as well. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think she is divorced too. Yeah. She is divorced too, but she's in a relationship, but she oh. doesn't want to remarry. When it's, they have like a mutual thing between the two of them yeah that's interesting okay yeah uh, yeah nonetheless though it sounds like you really enjoyed um going to going through the cer the ceremony ingesting it um being more introspective you said that you help it did help you heal from a bigger thing right um yeah. you you said you relapsed but you didn't you said you almost relapsed yeah. Okay. yeah i guess i almost yeah i guess i almost relapsed i was just surprised that i was feeling how i was feeling yesterday but it's okay um and something i will say so it's not a very you drink the medicine and it's not comfortable the whole time like you have like stomach discomfort and you purge i was gonna say do you like vomit and yeah yeah you vomit it can come out the other way too um and like i felt like slight stomach cramping like steadily mm -hmm. well, while it was in my system. So, but you when like you feel it and then like you purge and you feel better, but then like you drink more medicine and you'll feel it again. So, yeah. Oh my God. It sounds like, so I just did an episode of me. I don't think he, so Kel Mitchell, right. From Keenan and Kel, he went, Oh, you, you know who I'm speaking about, right? Can, I do, but I didn't know you had an episode with him. That's so cool. Yeah. No, not with him. I oh, <laughs> <laughs> on him, on him, on him. Oh, oh got it. Okay. Yeah, and like he was exper I, I just don't remember. I think he just went to like a prayer group, maybe. I don't remember mm. if they ingested anything. I'm gonna have to watch it again. But it sounds like something similar happened, right? Where he kind of like um, Pur purged. Yeah, they purged, right? Um, oh, okay. To kind of get rid of like any things that were attached to them, um, like demons or anything like that, or um, spiritual um, strongholds. That's the word I'm looking for, spiritual strongholds. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's working for you. You're doing what you have to do. You're on this healing journey. Um, mm -hmm. I was plant-based. Um, yeah. Um, for how long? I was actually, you know what got me pregnant? Being plant-based. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were so healthy. I was, oh my gosh. So I was trying to have a, my firstborn. We were trying to have a baby for a while. Yeah. We gave up. And then I like started to become um, vegan, right? Do you know Mashara? You do know Mashara. Yes, of course. Yeah, my sister. So yeah. 
Miss Charo, um, I remember she kind of helped me along the way, and then I became vegan. But she's vegetarian. I became vegan, and then yeah. not long after, I got pregnant, and then I got pregnant again, and then I got pregnant again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then since then, I stopped. Um, I'm pescatarian. I still don't eat meat. Um, but mm-hmm. I'm pescatarian now. But I just I thoroughly enjoy the plant based life. Um, mm-hmm. I still do primarily just eat plant based. Um, maybe once a week I might have some kind of fish right Mm -hmm. um but yeah so i enjoy hearing that you're plant-based because i know you weren't always plant-based at all no i did stop eating meat for like a very short stint during college because there was a time um when there was people outside near the student union like you know that strip by the student union Mm -hmm. to the library what is that called again yeah beats me i don't know i feel like it had a name it something like maybe <laughs> yeah yeah there were some people out there showing animal cruelty videos oh and like they weren't trying to tell people to stop eating meat they said just limit your meat consumption so i did that and i was like then i wasn't eating meat but that only lasted like a couple months i think until i went home for christmas and there was oxtail on the table yeah so right um but yeah so that wasn't really for health reasons i was like for animal cruelty but this time around, since I stopped eating meat um, four years ago during COVID, it was like for health reasons. And it was because, you know, COVID, they're talking about everyone getting sick and like your mm-hmm. immune system. And I came across the information of this doctor. His name is Dr. Bobby Price, but he goes by Dr. Holistic on Instagram. And, um, you know, he'd be on Instagram live talking about the relationship between what you eat and your health. And so like, you know, some of this stuff started to like make sense to me. And I was like, okay, like, you know, he has a detox that's all herbs that are like burdock root and red clover leaf. Like basically it's these two teas for improving your gut health. One is for getting rid of parasites and candida out the body. The other is um, just improving your gut health. I can't remember specifics, but, he talks about, you know, the importance of doing a detox to get rid of inflammation and toxicity out the body. And while you're on the detox, you eat plant-based and ideally you continue eating plant-based after the detox. So I was like, you know, I'm going to give this a try. Is it frozen? Oh, I thought it was frozen. No, no. Um, <laughs> you're just a great listener. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And like, I became a part of his private health group it's a membership program and he would like go on zoom you know we could interact with him more and like i just started learning so much and like saw the results in myself you know i saw my skin improved i felt like my energy levels improved this was a big one my farts used to smell really bad they stopped smelling really bad you know that's because you're not eating anything that can be raw and be dead inside you so you're not going to give up that same smell um and this was during covid which is amazing because i also learned about you know deodorant like typical deodorant um has things inside of it has aluminum and like some other thing inside of it that can block your lymph nodes you know that's why you don't sweat as much on when you wear deodorant so i stopped wearing deodorant during that time um which was great that it was during lockdown so you know you're gonna get give off some odor in the beginning you know and you're not trying yeah and then so um but I detox that out. So even when I, so I mostly use key lime instead of deodorant now. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so um, I forgot where I was going with all this. And I wanted to say something about, oh yeah, you said plant-based is what got you pregnant. Yeah, because do you feel like your body was in a healthier state and that's why you got pregnant? Um, probably, um, cause I still, but- I always worked out. Um, mm-hmm. The only changing thing was I, oh, well, my husband, uh, listen, I'm going to cook and I'm going to leave cooking once. So I became yeah. plant-based and he had to be plant-based too. And so yeah. maybe, right? So the only thing that changed was what I was eating. Um, and I feel like maybe that did. I definitely had more energy, 100%. Um, I had, I was less irritable like a hundred percent less irritable because I used to get irritated very easily. And, but that's me learning like, okay, wow, they pump these animals with hormones right and then they have to mass yeah. produce these animals too and the it's it was never about cruelty to me and honestly if somebody wants to eat meat i'm not going to shame you for it like that's your lifestyle but i know for right. me it was just like yeah i feel i can feel the difference 
Um, Mm -hmm. and it forced me to eat more veggies, right? It forced me to eat more whole, like whole list, like whole life. I think they call it whole life 30 or something like that. Like eat that Mm -hmm. way. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I just appreciated it more. And I guess it was less stress in my body. And we know that pregnancy come, it's hard to get pregnant when you're super stressed. And like, if I knew I was already doing things like cognitively internally, I probably had to do some things too. So yeah, for sure. I think, I think that's what it was. So. I think so too. It makes complete sense. Cause like sometimes people don't, aren't getting pregnant and then like they change how they're eating. Just like you said, eating more plant-based foods, whole, whole foods that are naturally occurring. And then their body is in the more healthier state, mm-hmm. beef, you know? So, and it goes for the men too. Sometimes, you know, their sperm isn't as healthy as it could be because of how they're eating. And if you're going to consume mostly naturally occurring foods now, that's also going to make your sperm healthier. So it was, could it's a combination of the two for the two of you, you know, you don't know who, who it affected more and whatever, but it's beautiful that what happened happened, you know, three mm-hmm. times, three blessings. That's amazing. Yeah. So I'm happy that you're really a living testament to like changing what you consume can have a positive effect. And I love that you said like you were consuming more, plants and uh, fruits, you know, because some people think, well, I don't need any meat or animal products, so I'm healthy, I'm I'm vegan, I'm healthy, but no, because you can be vegan and like eating a lot of junk food and a lot of chemically processed things that are just as bad for you as consuming hormone infested meat. Mm -hmm. So it's really about being intentional to consume the plants. That's why I like to say plant-based. Mm-hmm. Instead of like vegan, right? Yeah, instead of vegan. I, so I usually say alkaline plant-based because a step mm-hmm. further from like being exclusively plant-based is like alkaline, which is consuming um, things that are not hybridized, no chemicals, just naturally occurring foods. Mm-hmm. That's how I mostly eat. Sometimes I will go out to eat and don't eat alkaline, but most of how I eat is alkaline, especially like how I cook for myself is alkaline. I desire to get to that step. Mish is always sending me like, so I, I consult with her all the time because I know she's like really into, she's a holistic doctor, right? And so I know she, or naturopathic doctor, I think um, uh-huh. that's the proper term. And I know she's really into those things. And so she would kind of tell me like, hey, this is what you would eat for this blood type. This is what's more alkaline. This, And so I love it. Um, I just don't yeah. have the commitment to get to that space right now. <laughs> that's okay. <clears throat> so a step at a time makes a lot of sense. So in this fitness world, right? So you're a yeah. trainer. What would you say are some common like mental health benefits that you've observed with your clients as you're training them when it comes to their fitness journey? Yeah. You, mood improvement, you know, mood improvement for sure. I've seen that in myself. I've seen that in my clients. You know, sometimes they'll start the session. They're saying how tired they are, how stressed they are. And like at the end of the session, sometimes they have more energy. Sometimes like whatever was stressing them out prior to they're not it's not as heavily on their mind anymore or maybe they feel more clear-headed about it um and i've seen that in myself you know sometimes i notice like oh i'm not in the best mood today like and like sometimes most of the time when that happens like i haven't worked out for that day you oh know my goodness yes just to interject yeah. really quickly my yeah, husband yeah. just does not understand right yeah why i don't like going to bed past 11 because i have to wake up at five to work out otherwise wow. My mood is so off for that day. And I'm talking about to really snappy. So I get it. I get it. Yeah. And just from like, sometimes I think about like, why is that? Like, I'm sure things are happening internally on a hormone level. But I also think like, maybe you're holding on to something energetically and like, you actually physically sweat it out. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. you sweat out the fatigue. Sometimes you sweat out like a food inside of you that is causing you to feel uneasy. You know, Mm -hmm. you know, just like that movement, that blood flow to the brain, to the muscles, like it really makes a difference. It does. It does. And I will say too, like I'm learning more about nightshade. So like I have a 
condition. I have an autoimmune condition um, uh-huh. and I'm learning to, which makes me sad, right? It's one of the things like I almost broke down in my doctor's office because they're like, oh, well, you know, you can't eat this. You can't eat that. And I'm just like, but I eat veggies. And like, so I'm learning like some fruits and veggies are nightshades. And so even knowing that I might consume some by accident, I think I do release some of that. Like um, when I'm working out, like for sure. Right. Not that yeah. they're toxins, but we do release a lot. Like it is energy. Like everything yeah. is energy. Right. And so right, like right. Working out helps us release some of the energy that just doesn't belong in our body. It's true. It's absolutely true. Yeah. So yeah. And another thing that I've noticed with my clients and in myself, like we'll do like hard things while exercising and you feel like better able to handle like the hard things that come your way that are not even exercise related. You know, Mm -hmm. say your spouse is like upsetting you, children could be upsetting you, your work is upsetting you. Like maybe usually that feels like unbearable, Mm -hmm. but because you did something so challenging physically, you're better able to handle those other stressors. Mm -hmm. I believe it, right. So cognitively you set the platform, right? So it was just like, hey, I perceive this thing as being really huge, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm, la- I'm, I guess I don't believe I can do it, right? I have, la- I lack confidence in myself, and so once you endure it, now these little arguments that you have with your significant other or something that happens at work, you're like, well, this is nothing, right? Because on a cognitive level, you've already surpassed this hard obstacle or something that you viewed as hard. So like our perception means a lot, especially when it comes to just. A- on a cognitive level so that makes a lot of sense do you have like specific exercises or techniques that you use I know I heard you say mindfulness a little earlier um with your clients still if they're like hey I had a really hard day is it like hey okay maybe you do these burpees because I know this is going to help connect um cognitively for you so are there any specific movements or techniques or exercises that you use that you find particularly like effective when it comes to boosting mental health. Yeah. So I had a client yesterday and she said like, she's been going through a hard time with her son. And, um, so when we started the session yesterday, um, I focused a lot on stretching her hips because mm-hmm. we can hold a lot of stress and tension in our hips. And so we started off doing like a lot of hip stretches, a lot of hip mobility kind of things. Um, just because I felt like that would be really good for her. And um, we also didn't, I didn't want to do anything too hard because if you're already emotionally taxed, um, cortisol can be released in the body. And then like when you exercise, cortisol is also released in the body. So for some people, you know, if they're going through a hard time, doing really hard exercises is going to work for them. And for other people, you know, maybe that's not so great because there's just going to be so much cortisol and stress in the body and it's just too much. Everyone's different. I just felt she would respond better to like not having too intensive a workout for that day, Mm -hmm. just from knowing her. And at the end of the session, she felt so much better. Mm -hmm. You know, she was in a way better mood. She, um, I don't think this was the same day. It could have been like, Monday, she was like, she had like flu-like symptoms. And I think when I saw her Thursday, it was mostly about the sun. But I remember even the day when she had like the flu-like symptoms, was all, which was only like the session before, she like was coughing and everything less at the, at the end of the session, you wow. know? Oh, wow. Yeah. So and it, like for that session specifically, I know we didn't do anything too intense, mm-hmm. you know? but what we did do just like low impact kind of stuff, which doesn't mean everything's easy, but just like not as impactful, you know, it gets the blood flowing. If blood can flow to different areas, you know, more healing can occur. Your rest, you're breathing more when you're exercising, breathing a little harder. So that's going to contribute to healing as well. So, yeah, I would say figure out what kind of person you are. If you're, if you like when you exercise hard, it's better for you in stressful times of stress, or maybe you just need to take it easy that day, but still get things moving. You know, I would focus on the hips, like hip opening stretches and mobility exercises. That's really interesting. So <clears throat> we do hold stress in our body. Mm-hmm. And I use the word stress and trauma interchangeably, um, mm-hmm. just because some people are just like, 
oh, trauma is like, I never, oh, it was something really big. Like I'm never going to a car accident or, you know, I've never had, uh, I don't know, gotten to like gun violence, but trauma is just really high levels of stress. And so yeah. we, we normalize our stress. And so when you say like hips, um, I remember when I first had my first child, I went to a masseuse and my husband took me somewhere. It must've been like our anniversary. Right. And so my mother watched my daughter and we both got, um, massages. And I remember the massage there was just like, wow, your, your hips are really tight. And mind you, I'm a, I'm a first time mom. And so I'm mm-hmm. always stressed at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes sense that you say that because we do hold a lot of, in our diaphragm actually era, area, right? A lot of stress is held there. And so when you do work out too, it forces us to exhale because a lot of us actually are holding our breaths all the time and we're not breathing, which is yeah. all pent up stress in our body. And so mm-hmm. working out forces you to exhale. So I'm, it's I'm glad true. You said that. I'm really glad you said that. So for yeah. you, um, at this point, is there anything that you would share when it comes to ther not therapy, I'm sorry, when it comes to mental health and fitness? Like what is something that you would recommend or do you recommend pairing these two together when it comes to just healing? Yes. Oh my God. That's part of the reason why I created my class in lit because um you know, I wanted to create something fun for people to work out with the music, whether it was um, to the beat of the music, whether it was dance or um, burpees. You know, I always thought go, doing burpees to the beat of the music was fun and encouraging. Mm-hmm. But also, like, around the time when I started Fit and Lit, I was, like, going through a breakup, you know. My, the first, um, my first love, you know, I thought we were going to get married. And, like, you know, that ended. And I came across Tracy G. I don't know if you're familiar with her. But she has these audio, she calls them audio vision boards. And they're basically like kind of like, I would say affirmation tracks, but but not just like affirmations like, I am beautiful, I am strong. <laughs> like, like, I don't know, it's like poetry and it has like to the beat of the music. Like one of the lines is, um, I'm grateful for these moving legs and these working feet. Oh, no, I'm grateful for these this working brain and these moving feet because both will take my anywhere I need to go, my butt, anywhere oh, I need I to go. Oh, I feel like I've heard. Um, so <laughs> very frequently, <laughs> I'll tell Apple Music. <laughs> I mean, not Apple uh-huh. Music. I'll tell Alexa to play like affirm- affirmative music, like affirmations. Uh-huh. And I think she's the only person I've ever heard. Maybe this is the lady. She's the only person I've probably ever heard who has like affirmations to like a beat of a song, and it's an actual song. Like, does she have soundtracks? Yeah. Is this her? Like, is this the same person? She, there's like an album. Yeah. So there's different it's ones. It's probably her then. Yeah, it's, it's probably her. her. And then I also like. So anyway, during that time, I used to listen to her a lot, and I was like, oh, it'd be cool if there was a class where you listen to this at the end of the workout because like your mind is just so primed for learning after exercise, like your brain actually becomes more sponge-like, so it becomes more receptive to learning. And um, that's why I created Fit and Lit. I was like, oh, I'm gonna play this after people work out so they can like, you know, be in a higher state of being after my workout. Oh, I was saying like, I was going through a breakup. So I used to listen to this tra- these this album like every single day, multiple times a day. And I really started to feel better, you know, cause I just loved everything it was saying. And like, you know, I saw that how it really helps me. So I was like, oh, this needs to be a part of something cause this is health, you know, yeah. this is this to be included. And like, I feel like at that time that was, I started the class in 2017, so I was, this was probably going on for me around like 2015 and 16. Or, and um, I feel like mental health and exercise, like people weren't really pairing that at that time. Mm-mm. So, but I was like, this has really helped me. I need to like merge this together. So that's why I started Fit and Lit because it was about, yes, being physically fit, but also enlightening your mind. That's the lit. The lit is like the mind, but also, you know, lit having fun. So it's both. We're fit and we're lit. I love that. And light up, lighting up the mind, illuminate, illuminating mm-hmm. the mind, like all those words. Listen, is, is I'm, I'm going to be in New York in July. How often do you do your classes? I do them like twice a month. Um, I One of the July dates, I already know it's going to be July 13th. I don't oh know. My, oh no, I'm going. So we're going for my sister's birthday. Her birth, her birthday is July 15th. 
So we'll be there that weekend. <clears throat> I was hoping uh, to catch one of your classes, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you it's do them okay. virtually too? Or no? I did I did during COVID, but I prefer in person, so I've been sticking yeah. to in person. Well, whenever yeah. you decide to film one of them while you're doing it, like in person, let me know because I'll definitely attend and support because I love working out. I do. I yeah. do not like burpees. I'll do uh -huh. them. <laughs> I'll do anything in the world except burpees. <laughs> right, right. Um, and that part of that is because of my leg, like my knee. But other than that, I will definitely support because I, I'm, I, I love the concept. Like I, I genuinely love the concept. Like I didn't know it was this in depth. Like I knew, I think fit and lit. I think Janelle, but I did not know like you incorporated the two, and that makes it even more powerful. Like, yeah, really yeah. Powerful. Okay, okay. So. We're at the point of the show where it's for the culture. Yeah. Ooh. However, if I remember correctly, it, what, is your dad Jamaican or is he something else? The, my both my parents are Jamaican. Okay, so we're in another like conundrum. Do you, so? Do they speak Patois like very actively? Of course. Or? Okay, so yeah. this is not gonna work for you, Janelle. So I'm gonna do what I did <laughs> with my other, <laughs> my other um. Um, interviewee, right? So usually I would give you terms and I would ask you to translate them or guess what they are, right? Mm -hmm. However, you're going to know what they are. So right. I'm going <laughs> to leave the floor to you. Are there any terms that you use often that you would want to share with our audience? Because I love incorporating my culture because it's, it made me who I am. It's a part of my socioeconomic system. So is there any terms that you would like to share that you might use often or um, just think that they should know so they can start using it as a part of their regular vernacular? Jamaican ones or just ones that I say? Um, so Jamaican so or Patois, like. Oh. Uh, um. As you're asking me this, I feel like the only thing I can think of in my head is "Who can't hear must feel," but that is not the one I'm trying to share right okay. now. Well, <laughs> you could share it and then probably detest it, if that makes sense. I mean, I feel like my parents used to just say that to me when I wasn't listening, and there was like consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I could put a positive reframe on it. Let's go for it. I feel like, apply, like, who can't hear must feel like the hearing we can think of as God or intuition. Mm -hmm. So if we're not going to listen to that, there's going to be consequences that we experience that we feel from not listening to God, not listening to our intuition, that may be unideal for us. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it's important to, you know, talk to God, listen to God, listen to your intuition. And I say that, like, I'm using God and intuition interchangeably because I feel like they're one and the same. Um, and it's that, it's like a quiet voice, you know. I'm still learning myself to listen to it. You know, I do my best and practices where that encourage you to be still and quiet your mind, like praying, meditation, taking time to breathe. Those are kind of moments sometimes when you'll hear that inner voice. Mm -hmm. And if you can listen to that inner voice, I think positive, powerful things can occur for us. But if we don't take the time to listen, then we feel like the negative effects. If we're just like going, 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 not taking time to slow down, we can feel those negative effects. 100%. From stances. 100%. I love the way you, you reframed that too, right? Um, that was a big one in my household. Probably still <laughs> I hate that for you throwing <laughs> All right. Uh, and it was just justification for me getting beat. So. <laughs> Right. That's why I'm like, this is traumatic. I don't want to share this. <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of people could probably relate. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Um, any other phrases or words that maybe come to mind? So if like, oh, I got one. So like if, and maybe you know this, maybe you don't. So if I'm like, oh, Janelle, that's my chargey. You know what that yes. means? Yes. Yeah, Tell like my love. Char so chargey, so like friend. Like that's my big friend. My big friend. Oh, okay, okay. You yeah. know that I never heard that growing up, but I feel like I heard that in a song. Okay, and yeah, maybe they probably use it a lot in the song. It was something of, of endearment, like a term mm -hmm. of endearment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I'm not gonna go around calling everybody my chargey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I am so glad that you were here on the pod. I appreciate you 10 times over just because you didn't have to be here. I know you are a woman of a lot of things. Like I see you on the street, not the street that way, y'all, but like she's on the the streets, like doing her thing. I think the last video I saw, because I'm not on Instagram a lot, was um you were you dancing? You were in the super it must have been Halloween, maybe. And you were like, yeah. um, what were you doing on the street? Like people were watching you. Oh, I was doing exercise that I call living lifts, but they're traditionally called deadlifts, but I like mm. to speak life. So I call them living lifts. But yeah, I was a competition of who can do um, the most amount of deadlifts, I think in one minute. Mm-hmm. And I won. And mm-hmm. it was on Halloween. So I was like dressed as Wonder Woman, Wonder. even though I was really just calling myself super genial. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. Yeah. 225 pounds. I think you had one minute, as many reps as possible. Wow. And there were men there too doing them, right? Or- yeah, but they only had the men go against the men and the women against the women. The men, I think their weight was like 385 pounds, something like that. As many as they could in one minute or 315, something like that. Yeah, I wouldn't even be, I wouldn't do one. So uh, big feet for you, a big feet. Oh, okay. So if uh-huh. people want to continue the conversation with you when it, when it comes to ayahuasca, I said it right? Ayahuasca, yes. Almost. Okay, so ayahuasca right? Mm-hmm. Or any of the traditional healing, or just if they are in the New York area and they're seeing this episode and they want to join Fit and Lit, um, you are free to give your socials, but I preach boundaries, right? So if you don't want to give your socials, you don't have to, but go ahead mm-hmm. and drop them if you like. Sure. So my Instagram is Janiel Mason, my first and last name, which I'm sure will be in the notes here. Mm-hmm. And I also have one for my class, Fit and Lit NYC is the one for Instagram for my class fit and lit. So you can find me there. Um, I love talking about all things having to do with holistic health and healing. So if you ever want to talk about that, I'm around. Awesome. I want to thank you again for being here. Thank you so much. Yeah. So happy. I'm really happy that we did this. So thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So for my listeners, you know, you can share this episode. I would really appreciate it. Just share it to someone that wants to hear about this conversation, how I kind of went through my trauma and how Janelle was a helping hand. And then just Mm -hmm. how she goes through her life with her life stressors and the healing resources that she uses through it. And for some of you who have not seen the episode that's going to pop up right here, trust me, you don't want to miss it because it's going to be super juicy and it's going to be super helpful on your healing journey as you're unpacking trauma and healing your relationships. All right, guys, you walk good, keep the vibes high, and I will see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.